is this? It's the legislature. Ooh, they are a scary bunch. Hit the doorbell. <laughs> Why are you wearing that mask? Our school says we have to. We're used to it. Well then, no candy for you. <laughs> and no treats for that dog either. Why don't you wear masks? Our school doesn't make people wear masks. That's great. Lots of candy for you. We'll fluff up your treats. <laughs> That's not fair. Fair? <laughs> Greetings, ASA members. Halloween is upon us. But we don't fear ghosts and goblins as there are plenty of real terrors out there. The appeal of Judge Cooper's decision in support of the lawsuit filed to block the legislature's bill, which disallowed mask mandates, will be argued November 2nd with a decision after that. The court may take a few weeks to decide, so mandates can likely remain in place at least another month pending the Arizona Supreme Court's decision. But enough of masks. Let's talk about the State Board of Education with one good outcome and a possible goblin on the horizon. Then on to the monster of the aggregated spending limit. The potential goblin is the State Board's consideration of guidance regarding an open enrollment provision in the budget bill. And this is a provision that was not uh, thrown out by Judge Cooper's decision. What the guidance will do is prohibit schools and districts from knowing a student's special program status if they apply for an open enrollment variance. So schools and districts would be faced with not knowing anything about the student before accepting that child for open enrollment. If that child carries an IEP, this guidance would prohibit the school from seeing the IEP before accepting for open enrollment. You can imagine what this would do to certain district programs if they accept a student and suddenly discover he has heavy special services requirements. Remember, a district, unlike charters, a district has boundaries and resident pupils, and their first obligation is to those resident pupils. So we shall see what happens. That'll be the December meeting when the State Board considers this, to us, very ill-advised guidance and we are going to battle it. Today, the State Board of Education, as mandated by law, developed a list of below average schools based on the 2021 spring assessments. Yes, those flawed, non-reliable, non-valid tests given during the pandemic. The board was faced with three options to label schools. Option one would have designated 900 plus schools as below average over 30% of all the schools in Arizona. Option two would have impacted about 275 schools. Well, option three, 88 schools. Clearly influenced by input from ASA, ASBA, and Guppy Mac, the board voted to choose option three and do the least harm. Now that list will go to the state legislature and who knows what will happen with those uh, legislators. Now on to the monster. The monster of the aggregate expenditure limit. This was established by the Arizona Constitution and it limits spending for school districts statewide to the fiscal year 1980 level, plus 10% adjusted for inflation and enrollment. Wait, isn't it 2021, 40 years later? So the JLBC, Joint Legislative Budget Committee, estimate that the expenditures will exceed the limit this year by 1.24 billion. Yes, billion with a B. Now this covers most district expenditures. It does not cover grants like ESSER. 
If the legislature does not exempt school district spending from the, this limit by March 1st of 2022, school districts will be required to reduce their budget. ASBO has estimated that the cuts to the budget would average $1,387 per student. For most districts, it would be a budget cut of 17%. These budget reductions, if they end up being required, must be in effect on April 1st. But as I said, there's an escape clause. The legislature, we must rely on them for an escape clause, may authorize expenditures in excess of that limit. But that takes a two-thirds supermajority of the House and the Senate. So that's something to consider. That's a potential monster. Will the legislature, in fact, pass by two-thirds majority? If that's not done by March 1st, 17%. Now let's move on to opportunities. ASA is presenting an aspiring administrators workshop Saturday, January 8th. Sessions will include hearing from a superintendent, an HR director, a budget leader, and a panel of experienced principals. Then it will conclude with mock interviews. Registration information will be out soon on that. The ASU Helios Decision Center for Educational Excellence has put together post-secondary success reports for every high school in the state. The reports provide analysis on college readiness, including community college and state university performance, courses taken, grades received, majors, GPAs, and so on. In other words, who's succeeding and what have they taken to succeed? These reports are customized by school for every high school in the state. There's going to be a convening November 10th to release these results, and I'll be providing further information to you about that. Now, AASA has an aspiring superintendent's academy for female leaders, and this third cohort is starting in January 2022. There will be six meetings between January and June. Four will be virtual, two will be in person. And I've provided a link in this message where you can find out more information about that. And speaking of women leaders, ASA has the annual Women in Leadership Conference March 31st. So, enjoy the false fears of Halloween, but remember to work on the real fears haunting public education in Arizona. <laughs>